Working with ground to grid correction. What is ground to grid correction? Ground to grid correction is a way to correct the angle of a traverse drawing so that it follows what is intended on a survey as the basis of bearing. Typically, these basis of bearing calls will tie a monument with direction and distance from another known point or monument on the public land survey system. This call is intended to keep you square when mapping or retracing a survey. Most of the time, there is only one basis of bearing for a survey. If there are more than one, you will need to pick one that makes the most sense for your needs. Using Grout Grid Correction with Traverse Tool. Okay, so let's give this a try. I've got a map open in ArcGIS Pro that is projected in Idaho State Plain West, NAD83 US feet. You can see several parcels where I need to map a newly split segment of a quarter quarter section. I'm going to load the legal description that I mapped earlier into my Traverse Tool to save time. You can now see the parcel that I'm trying to map in. If you look closely, you can see that it seems a little askew from the neighboring parcels. This is likely due to the basis of bearing from my map being different from the survey. Now let's find the basis of bearing from the legal description I used to map this parcel. If I look at my legal description, I can see at the beginning it states, commencing at the northeast corner of section 9, from which the east quarter corner of section 9 bears south 1 degree 51 minutes 5 seconds west 2,562.58 feet. This is the basis of bearing. A good hint that a call is meant as the basis of bearing is when it states the words from which. Normal calls for boundary traverse or lead up traverse will often start with thence. If you have an older survey or legal description, they may not use this language and you'll have to read it carefully to figure out the basis of bearing, if it even has one. So, we have a basis of bearing. This is what we will plug into the ground to grid correction tool. Entering basis of bearing into the ground to grid correction tool. Let's open the ground to grid correction tool. You can find it under the edit tab in the corrections group. Click the drop down for it. Here you can see the on and off button at the top. There are also direction offset and distance factor options. And at the bottom interactive corrections change area you can see two buttons. The first, enter the ground line and draw the grid line. This is used to type the basis of bearing, and for that same line, mark on the map using the PLSS in your GIS a known distance and direction. The second option, draw the ground line and grid line, this is used to mark on the map using the PLSS in your GIS a known distance and direction and then marking again on the map the intended direction and distance. This is often used when you have known locations of monuments from corner perpetuation documents or you possibly have GPS data that is a more reliable location for PLSS monuments. For this exercise, we're going to use the enter ground line and draw the grid line method. So let's click enter ground line and draw the grid line. The tool now asks you to enter the ground direction and distance. This is the basis of bearing. Enter south one degree, 51 minutes, five seconds west, 2,652.58 feet. Press next. Now click on the map, the line that it mentioned in the basis of bearing. Commencing at the northeast corner of section 9. Click there first. From which the east quarter corner of section 9 bears south 1 degree 51 minutes 5 seconds west 2652.58 feet. Click there second. Notice how the drawing we loaded in at the beginning has shifted? Since we entered in the basis of bearing into the ground to grid correction tool, the traverse tool will now automatically adjust for basis of bearing if the tool is turned on. Let's test this out. Toggle on and off the ground to grid correction tool by clicking on its icon. See how the traverse drawing lines move? This shows you the change when you use the basis of bearing on your map. This tool won't always line up perfectly with your map. It just depends on the level of accuracy that was used to map the neighboring parcels and the care the surveyor took to record the basis of bearing. Now you give it a try.